Hello and welcome back to another guide for Xenonauts 2. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look into the ultimate guide to tactical combat, one of the most anticipated guides out there. I am making concise, informative, no BS, no repetition guides and today we're going to explore what that means for tactical combat. Let's jump right into it. All right, let's jump right into the tactical combat guide. For starters, when you are going to land without switching any of the start loadout, this is how your characters or your soldiers will start. First thing that I would recommend is put the snipers back here and here um, and put the heavies back here and here. You can do that in the actual air combat loadout and uh, make sure that the right characters are at the right uh, place. On top of it, we're going to go through a couple of core tactics. This is a day mission, so we uh, do not need to worry about uh, throwing any form of illumination, but we're going to go through the core basic mechanics. Every single character has an amount of time units, which you can see, plus a certain amount that they are not having available, typically due to um, too much weight. In the case of our shields, we have used a little trick of having an extra spare weapon, which we're going to drop right away. And you can see that it costs four time units, but frees up all of the other time units. We now do have a sniper weapon available here. This is just a bit of hygiene in order to get the game going. First things that I would suggest to do when you're starting a game is moving up um, and outside to get a full view of uh, the location. As you can see, every single character has a, four, uh, has a 90 degree angle, uh, which they can uh, look up and through. Turning up and costs one unit per 45 degrees angle. There is an option to turn quote unquote for free when you're throwing grenades or illuminating uh, the area. So make sure that you always scout out the entire area. Secondly, since we have not engaged anyone, let's talk about the Overwatch mechanic and how that will help you. All of the non-spent uh, time units will automatically be used with the equip weapon. Uh, any weapon that has an Overwatch uh, view here can theoretically Overwatch. So all of the remaining time units will be spent uh, in the most efficient way in order to hit. Mind you, Overwatch only works in the range of the weapon, so for the rifle that would be uh, 20 tiles plus, the, uh, twas, plus twice that, so 40 tiles. So any movement outside of 40 tiles will not trigger Overwatch as it de facto has a 0% chance to hit. Keep that in mind when we're now using our, um, our time units. Generally, what we would want to do is we would want to uh, spend the time units in a way that there is enough left over for overwatch as that is going to become incredibly important that you can retaliate against uh, the aliens secondly let's talk about cover and our general stance to that i already mentioned that certain penalties for the enemies will stack one of the easiest penalties that you can uh, that you can apply is the crouching penalty crouching always costs four time units Uncrouching also costs four time units, but it makes it 20% harder for the enemies to hit the soldier. This stacks with um, uh, the um, with uh, the cover that you are getting. Cover is indicated um, in three different forms. You can see full cover, which is green, and half cover, which is yellow. And then essentially you can see the directions from where uh, cover is being provided. In this case, it is provided from anything in that 90 degrees angle and yellow basically tells you that it is medium cover. You can see green is full cover, but it also prevents you from shooting. So say if we were to position ourselves here, you can only shoot in a 45 degrees angle up there because that's still um, that's still white. You cannot shoot into this direction and anywhere here would be here would be potentially where you can no longer start to shoot. So keep that in mind when you're working with cover. So now that we've gone through the cover mechanics and that we've gone through the time units, what we always want to do is we always want to make sure that people can hunker down. Another nice mechanic from hunkering down is when you are hunkering down, soldiers that are adjacent to you can fire over crouched uh, soldiers with no risk of hitting them 
and typically what you're going to do is you're going to move up hunker down or crouch down and then you're going to move up shoot and crouch down as well that way you do not have a problem uh, with um, with hitting your own soldiers so let's start to explore what i'm going to do here is you can see we're going to move as far as possible we can uh, we can see that basically 14 or 9 time units is what would be required for a shot we're going to hunker down which still gives us a snapshot if needed on the other side we have the same ordeal we at least need uh, nine time units to uh, to work and this will be good enough because we're knowing no one is up um, up there but if someone uh, some alien would shoot from here let's talk about the shield the shield would uh, only um, take hits from the 90 degrees that you can see so any alien that is down here would immediately uh, shoot into the shield however we can already say there is no alien here which means what i am going to do is i'm turning the shield around um, and by doing so i give up uh, the option for a ballistic snapshot but that is okay what i'm getting is any alien shooting from here or shooting from here or even from here would automatically hit the shield good let's continue to move up and do what uh, we wanted to do uh, next which is getting someone who can uh, still have an aim shot 22 uh, would be the magic number 16 would be the slightly less good number so in we can now decide to either go here and hunker down or we're going all the way up here which i am going to do and hunker down mind you it's still 16 and we would hit anyone um, who is coming from this angle on the other side we're doing a very similar uh, a very similar approach moving up the shield is essentially covering for us anyone who would shoot would first hit the shield and it's very rare that uh, the enemies are having explosives our um, operative with the grenade launcher currently just moves up we potentially want to remove some cover here grenade launchers are the only weapon that doesn't have an overwatch so what we're going to do is we're changing onto the pistol we're hunkering down here really what's going to happen next turn is we're potentially moving here and removing some cover and then moving back that's another important uh, method to learn early um, enough in the game you can move in and out of cover and then just take one shot the only thing that could happen there is that the enemy overwatches but that is relatively low percent chance um, uh, to happen now heavier weapons are a bit more delicate as you kind of end up in a strange situation where you can only walk a slight direction then turn a little bit and just keep enough for one uh, burst it's still worth it though as uh, the bursts are typically quite impactful so what we're going to do here Wrath has a very very nice movement rate we want to move up here or hunkering down you can shoot all over that without hitting your own uh, character what it's an incorrect uh, description at the moment that you need to stand i've never hit my own character if i was a j directly adjacent and he crouched beforehand the snipers typically a good spot for them is somewhere back uh, back here in cover if you can afford it might as well want to hunker down then that um, will work if you can't afford it they are also okay with standing for now um, as they are typically so far behind that uh, they can then uh, take normal shots keep in mind they can now see kind of 90 degrees this here illustrates it nicer anyone coming through here would immediately be sniped as you progress you want to move further forward so that's a first turn uh, you can see up here uh, the green bars are the ones that indicate how much time units you have left over and you want to have enough for everybody to take a normal overwatch uh, shot if you haven't spotted an enemy so as we're now progressing let's see if some of the enemies show up if not it is rinse and repeat to 
uh, go to the actual first contact with aliens. Let's talk about just tactical combat and how you want to position yourself as well. Aliens will roam quite a bit and what will happen is that you will find yourself in a situation where aliens are starting to move into your back. So you always want to pay attention that you are basically creating a death ball where you are uh, safe from all of the different directions and only see we've now taken an overboard shot here our own character has not been hit and this guy is taking a lot of fire so uh, we want to create a death ball where all of the enemies are basically clumped up and um, where you are clumped up and um, are basically defending against enemies in all directions it's almost like a uh, ball spear uh, mm, formation that you have seen in historical uh, games or in actual history like uh, for instance the uh, romans used to do that anyways moving on what are we what are the important uh, things to consider now let's use this combat situation to illustrate a few further examples removal of cover is highly important so one of the things that we do is either fire our dedicated cover removal um, grenade launcher or whether, uh, uh, via the demolition charges we want to remove cover. Demo charges do not only remove cover but also reduce the um, armor of the enemy so this was a perfect shot and you can see that although there is no cover immediately it takes the highest other cover which is here and here both of this we would need to remove in order to get completely rid of cover um, and basically takes both of them into consideration. So what we can do is we could move up, but the movement was too far, so we cannot even use the grenade launcher. And from here, it would have been too uh, too far in, in the back anyways. Good. So what we're going to do then is we're using, uh, where we double check for what are the most efficient uh, shooting methods and potentially in this case we're going to have two salvos and the first one already kills him very nice now we know there is another enemy back there which is going to be a problem so what are we going to do about it we could basically rush in or i will just showcase a couple of other tactics or we're going to use a smoke grenade, which I think in this case is a well warranted. So let's use this. And illustrate a couple of things with the smoke grenade. So as you can see, smoke stacks on top of any other form of cover, which means Every single tile of smoke basically creates an uh, impenetrable minus 20%. So anyone moving to here basically cannot shoot anyone here. The only place that they could shoot is through this very narrow corridor. Um, you could now throw a second smoke there or you can do something else, which is moving up into a different position. We are seeing the enemy. And we're fully moving into cover here. This one is a 100% cover. You can see no chance for them to hit us, nor is there any chance for us to hit them. Good. So this uh, Sibelius can only move through here, which will give us a great, uh, a great approach to attack them. Unfortunately, this one is a bit far away. We're still having one overboard shot ready here, just in case someone moves up. And let's continue. 24, 27. Uh, that's unfortunately good enough. Move into here. And that's another shot just down that lane in case another enemy comes through one other 
um, learning that I had from playing this game is don't open another front if it isn't necessary. So really what we would want to do here is let both of them uh, keep this flank solidly. And we are just going to hunker down and uh, using overboard shots as necessary. So that almost concludes the intro towards tactical combat. We've covered um, time units, we've covered movement, we've covered crouching and all of uh, the obstacles. We've covered general um, position of the squad. We've covered range, which is important for the weapons. You can see that most of the weapons have a different, um, a, a different uh, range indicator and you can see very much nicely on the bottom right side what the modifiers are. Um, shot modifiers typically apply first, so in this case it's a quick shot. Then um, range modifiers apply. You can see green, uh, green range um, still um, is the standard range. These are 30 fields. The moment that you go into the, the yellow range, which is uh, the extended range, you're incurring further range penalties, 10, 20, 30, 40. And at some point it becomes red as the range penalty just becomes too high. So this here is 30 f uh, fields, uh, this here is uh, twice the amount and afterwards um, the weapon gets additional range penalties. You can see it similarly here. Um, near shots get a good range modifier and the further you go away the range modifier completely goes away and then there is a massive drop off after the um, engagement range of the weapons with the pistol. The engagement range is, I think, 12 tiles. Yeah. So there you go. 12 tiles here. And then um, the, the range is just too far. Good. Other than that, really, the only other thing that you need to know is how Overwatch uh, works. We're going to showcase that. Overwatch basically is calculated on the residual amount of time units that you have left over, say 50%, and then multiplied by the reflex uh, value. So if you end your turn with maximum uh, with maximum time units, it's a very good chance that you will uh, trigger um, that you will trigger an Overwatch. If you end it with much less, uh, then you, there is almost no chance that that happens. Now you can see that our trap here worked very well. He couldn't shoot at anyone and instead he's now moving in. Smoke doesn't last super long, but it is very effective in what he uh, in what it is supposed to do. Now what we can do, just reiterating the same uh, things here, is remove cover, reduce the armor, and then we're taking individual shots. One two and he's down plus turning slightly around to here so that the Sibelius that comes from here would uh, would easily be um, covered by the shield so that's really it it's a comp uh, comprised but clear um, guide into uh, tactical combat you continue to rinse and repeat when you lose your shields you're moving back and going to take the sniper rifle if you're in a more open field, I would suggest to have a firing line. So space out your characters a little bit. Make sure that you are slowly but surely moving forward because overwatch shots are going to be very, very important for you. And make sure that you're also healing whenever needed. Uh, we haven't talked about that yet, but the medkits are actually quite important. Specifically, you want to prevent bleeding wounds for stacking up every single bleeding wound. Uh, creates five hit points of damage and they will not be removed until the end of the mission so you definitely want um, uh, to have med kits available that's really it i hope you found the tactical combat guide efficient and uh, informative if that is the case check out the other xenonauts two guides that i do have available other than that commanders good luck on the battlefield and give them hell take care and bye bye